Good Monday morning, everyone. For low impact workout today, uh, my name is TJ, first of all. For low impact, you'll just need a mat and you'll need a lighter pair of dumbbells and a heavier or moderate pair of dumbbells. Um, so let's get started. If you were in last week's class, we started off with four specific um, cardio exercises and that is where we are going to go today. So it's going to be the same four, but they're gonna be a little differently. All right, so just warming up the body. I want you in a plank position and I just want you to step and touch. So it's like a mountain climber, but a little less um, like impact. So we're not moving as quickly. So just step and touch. Good job, bracing the core. Nice job. Three, two, one. Excellent. All right, so now I gotta remember what we were just doing for last week. All right, so for the next one is going to be a plank. So you could either be on your toes or you could be on your knees, but this is what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you sit back, child's pose, and then plank, child's pose, and plank. So it's a little, it's a lot easier actually on your knees. And if you haven't gone, go. Otherwise, if you were on your toes in that plank position, then it gets a little more challenging. So you wanna keep your core tight when you're in that plank position and then sit back. Good job, almost there. Three, two, one. All right, child's pose for me, just to kind of get a stretch in that back. All right, so for the next one, it is going to be that same plank position. So either modified on your knees or on your toes, and you're going to step out to the side like a plank jack. All right, so a modified one. Ready, go. So if you're on your knees, you could do the same thing where you're tapping the knee on the floor, keeping the core tight. And then again, trying to make sure that your shoulders stay directly over your hands. This one is a little bit of a challenge just because you start stepping out and sometimes you find your body kind of scooting backwards. Three, two, one, excellent job. All right, so the last one that we are going to do is going to be uh, shoulders over hands, hips over knees. You're going to float your knee above the floor. And remember this one, you're kicking your heel towards your backside. If you wanna make it a little more challenging, you're going to actually be in a plank position and you're going to bring the heel to your butt. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. So you could probably actually do this in a modified sense. I think if you, yeah, when you're trying to figure out the modifications, <laughs> whether it's that bent knee, position, floating the knees above the floor, or your body is straight, you're just kicking your heel towards your backside. And if your arms start to get tired just because you're always having to support that body over your arms, you could always rest for a quick, quick second. Three, two, one. All right, child pose for me. It's always a tough part when you have to like support your body and your arms are having to carry that weight and then your triceps start burning. 
All right, so let's do it again. So we're gonna go back to that mountain climber and we're going to step in touch, but I want you to move a little faster, but not necessarily like running, not this, just moving the feet a little quicker. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. So just stepping a little faster, not necessarily being dynamic. We're gonna change this exercise up a little bit in the next round. Just to let you know, keeping the core engaged. Three, two, one. All right, child's pose just for a moment. All right, so for the next one, we're gonna do that power plank. So remember either, sorry, on your knees, sit back into it, or on your toes, sit back and over. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. Just make sure you're situated with your position and where you are. I think the next time I teach class, I need to kind of scoot this red chair out of my way. It's always the tough part about rearranging your living room. Good job. Keep going. Remember if you're on your knees, plank, almost there. Three, two, one. Awesome. Child's pose for a moment. So we have the plank jack. All right, so remember either in that modified position of knees out to the side, or on your toes, and stepping out to the side that way. All right, now if it is starting to become too much with your hands, go to your elbows and do that, which is what I'm gonna do. All right, three, two, one, go. So stepping out to the side, keeping the core engaged, keeping that body straight, whether you're on your knees or on your toes. And if you get tired, you could always pause for a moment and stretch it out. Three, two, one. Child pose for a moment. Even though it's low impact, my heart rate feels like it's getting up there. All right, so we're, the last one that we're gonna do is that runner. So the one where your heels are to your butt in that plank position. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. And again, if it becomes too much with being on your hands, you can move it to the elbows. It's a little more manageable that way. Just be careful that your backside or your behind is not up in the air. Keep going. I feel like I have to switch every now and again with my arms. Three, two, one. All right, child pose for a moment. All right, so let's do it again. So we're gonna do one more round of these four exercises. All right, ready, so back 
to the um, step in touch with the mountain climber. Let's make it up, let's change it up a little bit. Step out to the side versus stepping in, all right? So out to the side or bring your knee out to the side when you do it, all right? Three, two, one, go. So just step out to the side. Again, if your arms get tired, which is always the challenge with doing these types of cardio elements on the floor, is that your triceps or the back of your arm start to burn. Three, two, one. All right, so child's pose for a moment. Come up on your knees. Just shake out your arms really quick. All right, okay, so the next one is back to that power plank. So remember, either on the knees, sit back and plank position, or on the toes and plank. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. I feel like my triceps are on fire, partially because I was riding a bike yesterday for about 30, 45 minutes. Sometimes when your arms are locked and then your triceps in the back of your arm start to kind of, they're always flexed. And then you start to lose that feeling you're kind of down into your hands from locking your elbows out. Keep going. Three, two, one. All right, child's pose. So I think that's why I'm feeling that so much in the back of my arm. All right, shake out your arms for me, please. All right, so let's go back to that power or the plank jack. So remember, either on your elbows or on your hands, remember stepping out to the side. All right, three, two, one, go. Great job. If the arms start to get tired, either shake them out or drop to the elbows. Otherwise, you could do this on your knees and step it out to the side, which is slightly different than that first exercise that we did with the mountain climber or that step and touch. Keep going. Three, two, and one. All right. Child's pose really quick. All right, so we have one more round that we will do, and that's gonna be that runner, that horizontal runner where you're in the plank position and you're kicking your heels to your backside. After that, we'll get a drink of water. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Great job, keeping the core engaged. Heels close to your backside. Keep going. Great job, three, two, one. All right, child's pose. And then check out your arms and get a drink of water.
Not gonna lie, that was intense for me. All right. So for the next set of exercises that we are going to do, which is going to be our weights, whatever it is that you have. So we're going to do a row. So I'll turn so that way you can kind of see a little better. So a slight bend in the hip, arms down by your side. And this time we're going to have the hands facing out. You're gonna pull back, squeeze in between your shoulder blades. All right, three, two, one, go. So engaging the core or drawing the belly button towards your spine. Hands are face out as you pull up, keeping your elbows by your side. Nice job, keep going. Three, two, one, five. Pull one dumbbell down. And so we're gonna move to the goblet squat. So this is the one where you take your two hands, you're gonna almost hold your, your weight, almost like if you were holding a wine glass or how some people would hold a wine glass. So you're gonna hold it close to your heart, feet shoulder width apart. And I want you to sit back and stand up, all right? So sit back and stand up. So like you sit into an office chair, Keep going. Go if you haven't. Excellent job. Again, if you could only go halfway, just make sure you squeeze through your glutes at the very top when your body is straight. Sit back. Good job. Three, two, one. Nice job. All right. So we're going to go back to two dumbbells versus the one that we had in our hands. So we're going to do our, our deadlift. So remember last time we slightly angled out those feet and you're bending from your hip and the dumbbells or the soup cans are going to stay close to the legs, all right? Like they're kind of brushing against them. Ready? Three, two, one, go. So keeping a flat back. In your shoulders back, slowly moving through the motion, making sure that you're staying within your midline and that you don't feel like your weight is kind of more feeling it in one side of the leg versus the other. So centering your body. Three, two, one. All right, so we're gonna take it to the floor and this is where we're gonna do our chest press. So we're gonna lie on the floor. Just to remember this one is where the arms are at 90 degrees. So it's that L shape at 90, push it straight up, bring it down to where the elbows barely hit the floor and back up. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Great job. Keep moving. Three, two, 
one. All right. So set your weights down. When you stand up, just be careful as you stand with your head and the blood flow kind of rushing back down towards the rest of the body and not so much your head, just so you don't feel dizzy. All right, so let's go back to the row. So we're gonna go back to our dumbbells. So hands face out, slightly turn towards you and pull back and squeeze between your shoulder blades. Ready? Three, two, one, go. So always keep the core engaged, being mindful of your form. Pull the elbows back, squeeze between the shoulder blades so you feel it through the muscles in your back. Great job. Three, two, one. Excellent. All right, so we're going to drop one weight down. And we're going to go back to the goblet squat. All right, I'm going to switch my weight for a second just so I could show you something a little different. All right, so the only different thing is what happens at the bottom. All right, so hold your weight close to your heart. You're going to squat down, push it out, bring it back in, and back it up. All right, ready, go. So down, push the arms out. So push the arms out, bring it in, push it out. So you're challenging the center of gravity, which your center of gravity is your belly button when you're standing. And if you draw that line straight down to the floor, that's what keeps you centered. But with the dumbbell, you push it out, it shifts your weight or your center of gravity out, away from the body, versus if you didn't have like something that you were holding on to to begin with, like let's say a laundry basket. Three, two, one, all right. Okay, so let's go back to the deadlift. So grabbing the dumbbells, feet slightly angled and bending from the hip. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. Good job, shoulders are back. Bending from the hip. Remember feeling it in the back of your legs or your hamstrings. There is a slight bend in the knee. Hopefully you're not feeling it in the back of your knee or in the back of your low back too much. If you are, either slow it down or only go halfway and then back up. Three, two, one. Nice job. All right, so let's take it to the floor. So set the weights down really quick. Get yourself situated on your mat. And we're gonna do our chest press, all right? Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go. So press up. Now, if we wanna make things just a tad bit interesting, I want you to twist your wrist at the top to where the dumbbells face each other and then back out to the side. So your arms are back up to 90 degrees. And as you push, rotate your wrist, dumbbells face each other. Just make sure that you have that 90 degrees when you come back down. Excellent job. Okay, 
three, two, one. All right. So remember, set your weights down, slowly stand back up. And let's do one more round. We're doing pretty good on time, I think. All right. So back to the row. So we'll do this once, once more, one more round. All right, so hands facing out. You're gonna pull back, squeeze between your shoulder blades and then back down. Ready, three, two, one, go. Good job, keeping the core engaged. Being mindful of your form and every aspect, like your core, drawing the elbows back, but squeezing between your shoulder blades and making sure that you stay focused. Sometimes it's hard, especially when we start thinking about other stuff. Three, two, one. Excellent job. All right, so I'm gonna to switch to my lighter dumbbell just to show you the one that we did the last time with our squat. So feet, shoulder width apart. Remember, sit back like a chair, push the dumbbell out, bring it back in and stand up. Ready, three, two, one, go. So push it out and then stand back up. And remember, squeeze through the glutes at the top. Kind of like you think we're doing that bridge for our low back, squeezing through the hips. Great job. Again, keeping yourself centered, making sure that the weight is distributed evenly between your feet. That you don't feel like your weight is shifting either to the right or the left. Three, two, one. All right. So let's go back to the deadlift. So grabbing your other dumbbell. Feet slightly angled out. And remember bending from the hip. Ready? Three, two, one, go. So a slight bend in the knee, bending from your hip. Remember feeling it through the back of your leg. So that slight angle of the feet out. If you saw the post on Instagram for Friday is that we're hitting a different angle of the hamstrings or the back of the leg. Three, two, one. All right, take it back down to the floor. All right, get yourself situated first. All right, lie back. So last one, all right? So remember arms out at 90 and then remember push up, twist your wrist at the top so that the dumbbells face each other. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. So arms out at 90 degrees when they come out to the side, push up, feeling it through the chest. Great job. Keep going. Almost there. Three, two, one, nice job. 
All right, set those dumbbells down. Remember, as you stand up, carefully stand up. All right, grab a, yourself a drink of water. We roughly have five minutes. So let's kind of do the standing versions of our cardio elements just to make it quicker. All right. So standing up and just marching. So bringing the knees, I want you to bring them high enough to where the upper thigh is parallel to the floor. And it's easy if you hold your hands out and your knee is hitting your hand. So that way you know that your thigh is parallel to the floor. So this is like our mountain climber, our stepping touch mountain climber, but it's almost high knees in that sense. All right, three, two, one. All right, so just like our plank jack, we're going to do a step touch with our jumping jack. Ready, go. So just moving the arms overhead, just step and tap. Now you could always make these exercises dynamic. If you feel like you need to pick up that pace, there's nothing wrong with that. Just be mindful of your joints. Good job, three, two, one. All right, so with this one, this is that heel kick or that butt kicker, which is like the, the grounded kind of horizontal runner that we were doing. Ready, go. So again, just heel to your backside. And you don't want to step too wide out with your feet. Like so, it just takes a little longer to get that heel closer to your butt. So I just step a little more narrow. Excellent job. Keep going. Almost there. Three, two, one. All right. Okay, shake out those legs. I'm sure your hips are probably feeling it. All right, so let's do just some mobility stuff. So we're gonna cross the arms. Moving forward and back, forward and back. Still feeling the stretch and a slightly, I'll say ballistic, but it's almost like it's a controlled stretch because I'm not whipping my arms back. I have control as I'm moving my arms. All right, okay. So now let's move on to um, the stretch for our legs. So we're going to stand and we're gonna do our quad stretch. Almost sat down just cause I was gonna show you the glute one. But then I was trying to stay in line with what I have written on my board. All right, push that knee back just a little bit. Good job. All right, switch to the other side. So grab the top of your left foot. And doing a quad stretch. Push that knee back just a little bit. Good job. All right. So next, I want you to get into almost like even if your hands are far enough out in front of you and your both your hands and your feet are flat on the floor, your backside is sticking straight up in the air. 
I want you to walk it out and then walk it back to where you feel that stretch a little bit in the hamstring and then walk it back out. So think like an inchworm or like that weird little caterpillar with its full body, kind of like you think like a slinky. Good job. Give me one more and we will be done. All right, walk it back. Feel that in your hamstrings. Excellent. Good job. All right, so Express Abs is happening here in about three minutes. Uh, if you were staying on, see you soon. Otherwise, have a great day. All right, bye.